and thank each of you for uh, being here all day, day to day. And, and certainly, uh, as uh, Mr. Nordstrom started out this, you let us know clearly that this is not about politics, it's about people. And I just say thank you for that because that's what it is. And to the families, I want to let you know that the people back home are standing with you. Uh, we had unbelievable questions that I'll submit to you uh, that we won't cover today in terms of asking them that we'll submit to you uh, for you to answer, but they're standing with you to get to the truth of this, and they will not sit down until those questions have been answered, and I thank the chairman for this, this uh, informative hearing. Uh, Mr. Thompson, let me go. You had talked earlier about the, the deployment of uh, the FEST team, and, as, and you said that you thought it was important to do that. Were there any other agencies that thought that, that other than you, that thought that was, that was important? Yes, uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation and uh, DOD specifically, uh, our SOCOM friends. So you're saying that it wasn't just you, but it, the DOD, so outside the State Department, the DOD and the FBI both felt like that that was the appropriate response to make sure that we, we provide that kind of uh, forces. People who are part of the team, a normal part of that team that deploy with us were shocked and amazed that they were not being called uh, on their cell phones, beepers, et cetera, to go. Uh, whether or not that view was shared by uh, very senior people in those institutions, I do not know. All right, but, but the DOD and, and FBI uh, had a contradictory response to what the State Department's ultimate decision was to deploy. Well, again, the, the, the State Department doesn't make that decision. The, the National Security Council Deputies Committee uh, authorizes the deployment. So I think uh, what transpired was um, a strong enough uh, conversation from our, our, uh, our department reps that uh, they were convinced that was not the thing to do. All right, Mr. Nordstrom, and let me go back to the ARB because we've, you know, everybody talks about how wonderful this process was. What I see it as narrow in scope, incomplete in its nature, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but earlier you talked about the ARB fixed blame, I think you said, on mid-level or those career employees, not those at a senior level or the political appointments. Is that correct? That's correct. So, and did you not say that that's where the decisions are made at that senior level? Uh, that's correct. And Master Pick Pickering asserted that it was made at the assistant secretary level and below. That's at variance with what I've personally seen. So you personally documents. believe that the decisions are made at a much higher level? And I see, uh, Mr. Hicks, you're nodding your head uh, <laughs> yes. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. So, so the ARB, in, in looking to place blame on those career employees, ignored a whole lot of the, what you would say, the decision makers in terms of uh, assigning blame. Is that absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So both of you agree with that. All right, let yes. me go on a little bit further, Mr. Nordstrom. Uh, one last question, and then I'm going to yield to uh, the uh, gentleman from Utah. As we look at this, uh, is it fair that all the blame got assigned to the diplomatic security component. Aren't they just one component underneath the management bureau? Is that correct? Uh, that's absolutely correct. I don't, I don't believe it is fair. As I said, I, I think that uh, certainly those resource determinations are made by the other secretary for management. And so, so as, we, uh, as we look at that, when we start assigning blame, it's, uh, the ARB was incomplete in their analysis in terms of who was to blame for that uh, with regards to an agency. Is that correct? That's correct. I mean, you fixed blame for the three people underneath the Undersecretary for Management, but nothing to him. So that either means he didn't know what was going on with his subordinates, or he did and didn't care. All right, and there's some critical questions. I'm going well, to, yield to, well, to yield to the gentleman yield to the gentleman from South Carolina? Yeah, I'll be glad to yield to the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Gowdy. I thank the gentleman from North Carolina. I know I don't have much time, but Mr. Hicks, I want to set the table for the next round. Uh, September the 12th, 2012, did you receive an email from Beth Jones there that also copied Victoria Newland, William Burns, Patrick Kennedy, and Cheryl Mills? Did you, you're also in the distribution list. Do you recall receiving that email? Sorry, which, which email? I, uh, well, at that time this, I was receiving a couple hundred a day. A, a, and that's fair, and you had other things on your mind on September 12th. This one said, 
when he said his government suspected that former Gaddafi regime elements carried out the attacks, I told him that the group that conducted the attacks, Ansar al-Sharia, is affiliated with Islamic extremists. Do you recall that email? I do believe I recall that email. Okay. Uh, we'll now go to the gentleman from Michigan who may want to yield more time to the gentleman from South Carolina. 